Welcome to the Hyman Cast, a podcast of the Hyman Settlement School, where we explore the history, culture, and people that make the Hyman Settlement School what it is today, and how this historic institution will continue to serve its mission of celebrating heritage and changing lives in Central Appalachia. I'm Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. And welcome to episode number 16 of the Hyman Cast, take number two. Yeah, number two. This is, <laughs> this is our <laughs> second attempt at this one. Uh, if you if you listen to episode fifteen, you will recall us talking about how we had a giant failure, um, a day that just did not go good for us at all. My wife's tire went flat. I had to go rescue her. It was pouring the rain. Pouring the rain. Really, just something out of a movie. Yeah, <laughs> came came back. I was late and uh, got started the podcast, and it just just everything just collapsed and failed. So we're going to pray that doesn't happen today. Yeah, I, I, I live in constant fear now that that's going to happen. But we got through the last episode, so you know, I feel okay. Fear is a good way to learn. Yeah, it is. That's, that's, how, I, that's how I get through most of life. I'm scared something's going to go terrible. And, I, and you teach yourself yeah. to prevent that. Yes. So, But yeah, without further ado, we got our guest today. We've got Yoko and Anthony down at the Artisan Center. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Hello. Uh, mm-hmm. Glad to have you all back. Thank you for uh, putting up with all of our our shenanigans and failures <laughs> things reason. going wrong thanks for coming back we had a lots of scheduling and problems too i think we had we had it scheduled again and then jordan got sick yeah stupid so, immune system yeah weak. so we had to postpone again. <laughs> and uh yeah so we're glad y'all came back and uh, we just want to uh Highlight the Artisan Center, our, our good neighbors, our uh, partners in the work here in Hyman um, down the road, and uh, talk about what's going on down there at the Appalachian Artisan Center. We had a fun evening the other night and uh, at the summer celebration. I was like, wow, I'm having, having fun in downtown Hyman tonight. This yeah. is awesome. Pulled pork, yeah. music, auctions. I got in a betting war with a lady over a door that I didn't even want. Well, a great time. I I bet I bid on a, a Wi Fi speaker system that I was told that I won. And I <laughs> Who sent, told you that? Chris Boyd, I think. <laughs> and, and I sent uh, our uh, our farm crew over there yesterday because they wanted it. They wanted to be able to listen to music while they worked. So uh, I was like, go get that. And then they got over there and they were told that I didn't win it. So I by, don't. By a dollar. Somebody beat me by no, a dollar. I checked it when the auction was supposed to be over. It was thirty two dollars on the on the list. That was that was mine, right? <laughs> yeah, that was you. Yeah, and I there's won that thing. Wild, wild. So now it's, I guess I just got to go buy buy my own. Oh. For, oh. for thirty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wasn't getting much of a discount there. You you went almost to the ceiling and like right off the gate, and I'm like, nah, Corey, you got to play the numbers game, <laughs> dollar at a time, quarter at a time. But yeah. All right, so as we always do, Jordan, what are we getting started with here? The origin stories. So you two can pick whichever one wants to go first. <laughs> we'll let Yoko go first. Origin story. Origin story. Okay. All yeah, right. I, I think in the last episode, or when we first attempt, you got through your origin story and then everything collapsed. So we, we get to hear it again. Okay, <laughs> we'll try this again. All right, so um, I'm Yoko, and uh, I was born and raised in... Tokyo, Japan, and uh, now I live here. <laughs> okay. And now I live here. Yeah, so um, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, I was born and raised in Japan, but, like, I don't sound like like a Japanese person or whatever accent um, I'm supposed to have. I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I'd like to explain that I uh, went to an English-speaking school in Tokyo um, since first grade. Um, and then I, uh, that, that school is called Nishimachi International School. It's a pretty cool school. It's very small. Um, my graduating class was only 12 people. So there were six boys and six girls and we kind of grew up together. Um, uh, uh, and, (laughs) and then, um, I had to, uh, go somewhere else because the school ended in ninth grade and, uh, I ended up in a boarding school in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, and that's kind of where like my living in the United States started. Um, I graduated from there, went to Boston University. Um, and then I studied uh, painting there and I got a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts there. 
Um, and then um, I went back home. I worked for the same school that I went to, Nishimachi International School in the development um, office there. And uh, I was a um, alumni liaison there and worked there for a couple of years. Um, and then I married um, my high school sweetheart and then uh, moved to Macon, Georgia, of all places. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, lived there for seven years. Um, and then we moved down to St. Petersburg, Florida, where I had been before I came here. Um, there I uh, was a uh, arts magnet school um, uh, department chair and instructor there for 10 years. And uh, um, there I got a uh, my master's fine arts from the University of South Florida in interdisciplinary art. So that means you make art with whatever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what's the weirdest thing you've made art out of? Well, probably, I mean, what's probably the weirdest would be the performance art part of it. So um, I had to kind of teach myself how to to videotape myself and do things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes that performance art gets a little bit over my head, it's over my learning. It's a little crazy. Yeah. It's a little crazy. Um, but that kind of opened up a lot of um, conceptual works from there on. And uh, um, while uh, after I graduated with a master's, I, I went and worked with a place uh, called, it's a nonprofit called Creative Clay. Um, it is an um, arts uh, institution for people with disability. Um, and I uh, taught art there um, for transitions program, which is um, students who graduate high school, um, they have this transition, um, people with disabilities, a transition period of three to four years where they can learn some sort of vocation and, mm. and go into workforce. Um, and, but this was geared towards art, and I think that's when I realized that art can be something that you do to because you want to and and because you feel good doing it um which which was something that i kind of lost a little bit going into academia art for a while mm -hmm. um so that kind of relates to what i do now um with the culture recovery program at the artisan center working with people with substance abuse disorders so uh that's the nutshell sure. so I, I don't i've seen you helping people create their art but i'm not sure i've seen your art where can we find your art at you can um walk into my office okay. <laughs> <laughs> but those are all paintings um you can also go to um my website which is nogamiyoko.com and you can see some of like well because i do different things you can see pictures of the things that i do i do some photography i do some paintings so that's yoko nogami.com Nogami Yoko. Noga, Nogami Yoko. Nogami backwards. Yoko. Go back. <laughs> <Gotcha. laughs> yes. But yeah, go to that website. See yeah, some Yoko sure. Check that out. I, I, I'd never, never, I, I've probably seen it. I just didn't realize it was yours, probably. But Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, so um, what, what, how did you get involved here in Hyman? What brought you here? How did you hear about this yes. job at the Arts and Center? And how did that all play out? Yes. So, okay, about four years ago, um, I came to this region, Letcher County, to the Cowan um, Creek Mountain Music School, which is actually going on this week, um, virtually. Um, but I came here to learn how to play old-time banjo. Um, and uh, I went there for two um, summers straight, and um, I just love this region. Um, the mountains... Um, the trees, water, and the make of this whole place is very, very similar to the landscape of Japan. And um, I just fell at home. Um, and I just love banjo. And I just really like old-time music. And um, I visited, and in, in I think the second year trip on my way home, I drove. And I, I like to drive and camp by myself and things like that. And so I would take the big summer um, driving around camping up and down 
East Coast, um, trying to hug the mountain so it's cooler in the summer. Anyway, um, so I visited Heinemann because I was like, oh, I got to come see Heinemann Settlement School. And it was Sunday, so everything was closed. But I drove, <laughs> I walked up to the, the chapel there, and I was like, this is the most beautiful thing ever. And then I walked down to the main street, and then I saw the Artisan Center. And of course, it was closed. And then, <laughs> and then I'm like, I got to see the Luthery. So I went to the Luthery, and I'm, I looked into the window like this, and I'm like, this is amazing. I want to live here. And then Paul, the luthier, was in there. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, this is a weird woman, you know, looking through the window. And he's like, oh, can I help you? And I said, I love this place. Can I? <laughs> I was just looking. I'm sorry. And he's like, oh, come on in. And then he showed me around. And I was like, oh. I want to make a banjo, which I haven't made yet. Um, but <laughs> anyway, so I knew of this place. Um, and then this job opened up uh, middle of the year, uh, which was I found out two days um, before the position closed, the application closed. <laughs> and then um, so I applied um, and then I got the job um, by Thanksgiving. But remember, um, I was a school teacher. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I can come here in June and start the job. And they're like, oh, no, <laughs> like you got to be here January. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Um, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told my kids and, and the poor school over there. I said, I'm very, very sorry, but I got to go. <laughs> um, and the kids were great. The kids were like, you got to go. You love banjo. You got to go. And I'm like, thank you. So then I left. You got to chase that passion. I got to do it. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, it, and I think I forgot <laughs> to mention you are the artistic director of education and exhibition and culture at the, and through the culture recovery, recovery program. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot to say. It <laughs> is. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now let's hear from Anthony's origin story. Yeah. Well, I think I should have went first. I think she's hard to follow. <laughs> oh. uh, my name is Anthony. Uh, I'm 35 years old. I'm from Carter County, Kentucky. Um, went to high school at East Carter High School. Did a little vocational school. Um, got out of school, traveled. Most of the, most of my work, I've traveled across the United States building uh, substations uh, on windmill farms for different power companies and things like that. Um, I'm a uh, recovering drug addict. I've got 17 months clean now. Yeah. Woo. It's a work in progress. Uh, but uh, really, I don't have much interesting about myself. Yeah. You're very interesting. Well, yeah, I guess uh, I kind of. <laughs> uh, whenever I had uh, first got introduced to the Artisan Center, uh, I've had some sort of, uh, I guess you would say, uh, art all out throughout throughout all my life. But my grandfather was a woodworker. Uh, he made uh, like quilt chests, uh, porch swings, and things of that nature. And uh, I picked up that, uh, had a few different, uh, I guess, uh, male figures in my life that taught me a few different things, you know, uh, work ethic and stuff like that. Uh, I've, uh, I've rode a bull in a rodeo. That was pretty interesting in Wyoming. Uh, now, I asked you this last time, but, you know, it didn't get recorded. How long did you last? Uh, uh, like, uh, not, they opened the gate. And I think it kicked twice, and I just fell off the side. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't very long at all. I did it to impress a girl I met, a cowgirl. So uh, it worked out pretty good, though. Hey, you that's know, that's all you I, gotta. I moved in, lived with her. I, I lived with her for about nine months. So it, yeah, it worked out good. Not bad for a two-second bull ride. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she was impressed by the bravery. You know? Yeah, I think that's what it was mostly. <laughs> <laughs> just that I was stupid enough to try it. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, yeah, that's about it. No, that's not it. Yeah. Oh. Yoga. So, so I've I've asked I've asked Anthony to help us out over there, and I said, hey, you know what? We have to, it's Christmas. We gotta put up a tree, um, and he did this beautiful job in these two giant trees, and and, and why is that, Anthony? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, my family, my my grandparents had a flower shop back in the, my hometown of Grayson uh, for like thirty some years, and uh, I had. Uh, took it over for about a couple, three years, and actually uh, run it, uh, made flower arrangements and decorated houses and things for people for different holidays. And 
I guess I'm well. I guess I am pretty interesting. <laughs> Odd, oddly interesting. I guess I've got a few weird uh, multi talented. Multi talented. Yeah. That's Ma- very multi talented. But like artistically inclined. Yeah, I can make fire arrangements for holidays, funerals, weddings, and things. Yeah. So he just made this wreath out of this thing that's growing on the trees. Yeah. And yeah. I made. Then, uh, and then wove one of these things into the the the, the wreath. <laughs> It's yep. crazy. You gotta <laughs> see that. I guess I am pretty interesting. I guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were holding out on him, Sam. Yeah. 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 I can't do anything intricate with my fingers. It's just yeah. Just I, I, well, I, I guess I, I can. I guess it's more just a. I don't know. It's like a calming thing, you know. Just kind of get in the zone with it, and it just uh, calms me down a little bit. I guess. Yeah. Sure. Which I enjoy. It. I enjoy. It. I enjoy doing weird things. You wouldn't think a man would do. I guess you know, but you know. You know, I do plenty of weird things that people don't think men would do. That's right. Almost every single day of my life. Jordan so. has a new that's hobby, right. that a new venture and hobby that he's pursuing like every day. Yeah, that's true. Well, Last week it was kombucha. This week it's candles. So. Yeah, candles. Ooh, candles. That would be nice. Yeah. I'm still, I've never made a candle. Um, I'm working through it, so we'll see. And a turtle <laughs> shell that you found. Yeah, we're not going to mention the turtle shell. <laughs> people have told me that's weird, so I'm just not going to talk Are about it. Are you putting well, I mean, candles in the turtle shell? Yoko put it together. Yeah, that's oh exactly. My God. <laughs> I don't know about that, Jordan. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like it makes sense, I guess. Well, I mean, like, does it burn the wick is on the where the head's supposed to be? No, oh. it's it's like a it's oh, like the it's like the shell. I yeah, thought yeah. you were like standing it up and putting the, that's no, not good. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, Anthony, we want to get more into your story as we move on. Um, but first, Yoko, yeah. tell us a little bit about the Appalachian Artisan Center and uh, kind of the, the work that you all are doing right now and the Culture of Recovery Program and all the good details of that. Okay. So the, at the Appalachian Artisan Center, um, just want to let people know who might not be familiar with, we're an artisan center first. So it's an art center where we have uh, incubator studios that we rent out to artists. We have a ceramic studio um, in the main building, which is called the Cody Building. We have a, uh, a beautiful gallery store, and we have two galleries, uh, which is revolving exhibitions in there. And I just want to let you know that the next show that we're having there um, is a uh, tribute to Lee Sexton, who's an old-time banjo player who just passed. Um, and uh, it's called uh, Legend of Line Fork. Um, and it's going to be a beautiful tribute for him. We have, we're going to have uh, his first banjo that he, he actually made. Um, coming from the mm. Nile Center that we're going we're gonna to exhibit along with some um, artists that uh, sent us tribute videos um, and letters and pictures that they took with him. Um, and then this other part, a bigger gallery that we're going to have, um, a Native American show called Reflect Native American Reflections, and it's coming from the Kentucky Arts Council. So that'll open next, next week. Um, but so we have exhibitions in those, and then we have a remote um, studio, which is the Luthery, where we make string instruments, and then another remote, different building, um, which is the old high school in Hyman. We have a blacksmith studio, and underneath that is um, a troublesome instrument, troublesome string instrument company. Did I know that? <laughs> Troublesome Creek String Instrument Company. <laughs> it's a long name. Uh, and where that is, um, a guitar, a mandolin, and dulcimer making factory, um, which is under umbrella right now, um, hoping to become independent in a few years. Um, and that is a good kind of a segue to talk about the Culture Recovery Program, which um, is in its fourth year. And... Um, it started uh, with Earl Moore, and there's a lot of coverage in the media out there, a CNN report that um, that features Earl and uh, Doug Nasalroad, who's our master luthier, is a really good one um, to, to look in, and uh, understand how this was all started. But um, it started with Earl visiting the luthier and asking Doug Nasalroad um, if I, he can build some instruments and that the just the doing the act of making um the process is going to help him with his recovery process and so basically the idea of cultural recovery was born from that concept 
that keeping the hands busy, um, having some uh, purpose in life, and uh, the practice of art is what leads to and helps uh, the all the other really difficult things that uh, people in recovery are going through. Um, and it's just a great partnership um, in introducing the arts um, as a healing um, instrument, basically. Um, and so uh, the Artisan Center, in the, the various studios we have, we offer uh, classes for, for the um, Hickory Hill Recovery Center, um, which um, Anthony was residing in. Um, and then we also partner with Perry and Knott County Drug Court. Um, and the clients come every week. We have different days for different things, um, but almost every day of the week is open studio for the clients to come and uh, work on things that they want to work on. So we don't try to force people to, to do anything. Um, it's an elective process. Um, what's really exciting and, and which is strange because we were in pandemic for the last, last year, um, <laughs> And a half almost, right? Um, but uh, we are having a lot more community involvement um, in, in, in this. And one of the goals of the uh, cultural recovery is to reduce the negative stigma that um, people in recovery have. Um, so we are um, really hoping that the community will participate in the art workshops that we have on Saturdays that are open to the community and also the people in the recovery community. And so spending time together and just being humans um, and enjoyed um, art making is what we would really like to do. Um, so we have we have um, Thursday night classes now um, from 5 to 6.30 for uh, youth, children and youth um, that um, the settlement school zone, Kelsey Cluden is the teacher. Um, and that's been really um, successful and, and very fun. Um, so that's a free workshop. And so with thanks to different kinds of grant that, that we receive from um, – Operation Unite, and also from the Berea College um, Appalachian Fund, uh, we are keeping these workshops uh, super affordable, and some of them are free um, to come to. And so that's kind of like our mission um, right now. Um, I think uh, we kind of morph as, as we go, right? Like everybody has to kind of adapt. I think that's one of the things we learned through COVID is that we really have to be kind of nimble, um, adjust to, to the needs of the community. And, and that's what we're really trying to listen to and, and do. Um, and, and then of course we find people like Anthony and there are many, many more, um, that find something that we offer to be something they would like to pursue for, for their life. And that's like the super exciting part of this program. So, um, people in the Lutheran program who, um, find, the string instrument making to be to be something that it would like to do, um, the wonderful uh, uh, process that happens from the Luthery is to uh, find employment at the Troublesome Creek String Instrument Company, <laughs> um, and you can actually become an employee and make instruments all day, every day. Um, for the rest of your life, uh, <laughs> and um, sometimes we find people like Anthony who decided that weaving was something that he really wanted to do. Um, so then we were very fortunate to find Bob Young, who is also the Heinemann Settlement School and really an icon of, of Heinemann, and you had him on a podcast yep. before. Um, a wonderful uh, storyteller. Um, oh, yeah. And there isn't <laughs> a person he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. And so, anyway, he has um, taken Anthony under his wings, and uh, um, they now have an apprentice, uh, master apprenticeship, uh, was awarded South Arts grant to do this for a year, um, which is going to really help Anthony to master this. And yeah. uh, we're hoping that he will be the next Bob Young. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can be that. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a hard uh, hard shoe to feel. All oh. is. But uh, is that some of Anthony's stuff that you got there? In yes. Your so hold well, it up? these are. We well, you can you want to tell? Oh yeah. Well, I got. Uh, I started an Instagram account, uh, Cowboy Weaver. 
if Cowboy. anybody if anybody wants to check it out, I post my weaving things I do and uh, other uh, crazy adventures I have uh, throughout my week. Uh, really, I'd I'd seen these on Instagram. Uh, some ladies had been doing uh, with different uh, texture uh, yarn and things, and really just kind of copied it. Tried to. I failed miserably the first four times. Uh, whenever I took it loose, it just fell apart in my hands. <laughs> But uh, this one here is just different textures, uh, uh, soft to uh, like a more coarse, rougher feel. Just uh, just something to uh, really get the, just the, the different you know, the different styles and colors and things uh, uh, that you can use. Mm -hmm. uh, this was actually the first one uh, that I made that held together. Uh, I, when I started, I really don't have no idea at all what I'm doing. It just kind of, towards the end, I kind of put it all together, I guess you'd say. Uh, this one here, I've got a, tried to make a little sailboat and a wave crashing over the sailboat and a little rain cloud and whatnot. Uh, it, uh, I guess it was meant to represent, you know, that uh, like everyday uh, struggles of life, uh, you know, seem like they're, you know, it's too much for you to handle. Then I got up at the top, it's got a cross, uh, just to, you know, look up and keep your faith, you know, through all the struggles you have in everyday life, because uh, it'll, you know, it, it'll, it'll get bad, it's going to get bad, uh, no matter what, but it, it's also, it'll get better, you just got to keep on, keeping on, you know, you can't, uh, you can't give up on it just because you've had a couple bad days. Sunny sky. Then I got a little, yeah, little blue skies and whatnot, but yeah, you know, it's just something... You know, so it, it, at the time, uh, at the time when I made it, I, I was wasn't really going through anything uh, in a certain nature. Just uh, kind of feeling down, kind of felt like I was stuck, you know, somewhat because nothing had really changed. I was just going to work, coming home, going to work, coming home, and uh, so I made that piece, you know, just to just to kind of you know just you know keep your faith. You know, things is going to get better uh, no matter what. You just got to keep on working at it. Well, for the podcast listeners, this is um, an actual, this is a, a lap um, loom. Oh, yeah. Woven piece. It's a small piece. Yeah. Um, not not on the um, I've made, uh, a big loom. Whenever I had, uh, whenever I started into the weaving, uh, we'd found a lap loom in a closet we were cleaning out. And I had uh, copied it uh, and made my own that I'd been using. Uh, which it wasn't, it was, it was, turned out pretty good. It was a few nails and screws sticking out here and there that I had to work with. But uh, it, uh, that's what I've been making these uh, wall hanging pieces on is the lap loom. Uh, me and Bob's actually uh, dressing out the uh, floor loom uh, right now. Hopefully, he's supposed to come by today and uh, get me started on the rest of it. So hopefully, it'll be back up and operating within the next week. And uh, we can start making some other wild things. <laughs> you visit the Facebook um, page. We post um, some videos of them actually winding that that warp yeah. and putting it onto the loom. is a pretty pretty awesome video with yeah. Abby and Macy helping you. Yeah, we got uh, we we borrow some of the volunteers every once in a while. Abby and Macy, and uh, they come up and help me and Bob, and they get to get to experience uh, the Bob Young uh, in his uh, natural habitat. I guess you'd say more <laughs> or less. He's a uh, he's a character. Bob is. I, I really do like him. Yeah, I'd say that Hyman is Bob's natural habitat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. So, Anthony, tell us a little bit more about, I guess, your experience going through the Culture of Recovery program um, and how, I guess, that sort of helped you, uh, you know, move forward with your life after going through uh, recovery and uh, kind of how the arts have um, helped you in that process. Okay, uh, well, I'd actually, uh, I had started the Hickory Hill program in February 2019, and, uh, well, you know, we had this big uh, national worldwide pandemic, so they uh, put us on lockdown. We didn't go anywhere forever. We just sat up there on top of that mountain mm -hmm. and sat there, and we were, uh, where I had just had started to get sober and clean, uh, really didn't know what to do you know i was dealing with the emotions and uh, thoughts in my head and everything and uh, they 
had eventually let us uh, start coming down here on Wednesdays to do the uh, cultural recovery program. And I went to the Luthery uh, shop, actually, and made a dulcimer and a ukulele. Uh, that was, I enjoyed that. That was pretty nice. Uh, finished, I started, what was it, in June, I think? Mm-hmm. When I first come down and started the uh, the program at the Arson Center. And oh, see, a year ago. Yeah, last year I graduated it. I'd finished the program at Hickory Hill in uh, September, I think it was September or might even been October, and uh, I had 40 days of community service left I had to do uh, to uh, satisfy the court systems, and I chose the Artisan Center to do it. Uh, got the approval and everything, so I started coming and hanging out down here every day in Heinemann and uh, started hand-sewing quilts, actually. We, we sewed two quilts. That was pretty interesting. It's uh, a lot harder work than I had imagined it was going to be. <laughs> Uh, I didn't think it was going to be all that bad, but it is a lot of hard work <laughs> to hand sew a quilt. And uh, that really wasn't my thing either. Uh, and I had to find something to uh, to kind of escape the reality going on every day, uh, the thoughts in my head and things. And uh, we'd found that lap loom. And uh, I built one and uh, started copying it. I watched a couple of YouTube videos to get started and uh, attempted to make some scarves. Uh, my first little couple pieces I did, and uh, that just it, it stuck with me. It, it helped me uh, kind of, I guess, concentrating on the, the over and under, over and under uh, uh, with the patterns. Uh, helped, uh, I guess, helped me escape, uh, you know, reality more or less. Uh, the thoughts would go away in my head, and uh, I'd be happier whenever I would get done doing it. So I stuck with it. Really, I mean that's uh that's the but that's the biggest uh, the biggest thing for me when I started was just something to uh, to do that I could escape you know reality and didn't have to go back to using drugs again uh, to find that and that's what uh, I've been able to accomplish so far at the Arson Center uh, Judgment Free Zone uh, they have been I don't know I don't know what I'd do without them really they've been more than supportive on just about everything I've come up with in my head uh, they try their best to figure out how to get me where i need to be to do it uh, really it's a it's been a blessing that i was able to uh, come down there and do it so what about weaving in particular kind of I mean, what what drew you into weaving uh well the 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 patterns are the more uh the more detailed uh like uh bed coverlets uh and things like that, uh, the more fancier, uh, like table place mats and things like that, uh, just the the design and things of it, it really caught my attention, uh, wanting to know how you done it, you know, how did they get it to look like that, because it don't look like you're going to be able to uh, have anything in cl- close to it whenever you start weaving, and then you actually do a couple foot of it, and you finally see it, you know, the how the strings, whenever you... Uh, uh, Whenever you switch the shed of the of the strings on the loom, uh, you know up and down, up and down, and once you do so much of it, you finally get to see the pattern uh, showing up. It's pretty it just interesting. Me really, it's something just it just caught my eye. I was just you know, I was just curious about how they actually you know because you got to set it up a certain way. You got to have this string and this number heddle and. So forth. It's a. I can't even imagine. Yeah, it's a, it's a process. It's terrible. <laughs> it's ter- I mean, yeah. Bob says that that Anthony's a natural, and I I think he is because I look at it and I I I'm confused. I don't see. I don't see that yeah. thing that you're seeing. <laughs> I, I I find complicated things fairly easy, and easy things very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> That's very relatable. <laughs> I feel like that is very relatable to yeah. you. Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't do the simple things. <laughs> yeah, I can't. That's I can't good. do simple things. It's it's too much to handle. O- overthink <laughs> it and make it more oh, complicated than it has to be. Yes, most definitely. If it's complicated, <laughs> I know how to do it. So, oh yeah, I have got no problem at all doing anything complicated. <laughs> if I've got a, if it's something easy like one step, I, I can't do it. It's too much because I'll overthink it. Yeah, because that one step is too complicated. Yeah. To, yeah. Oh yeah, most definitely. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. It don't even read the instructions on the complicated things, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't even. <laughs> yeah. Can't even. <laughs> uh, 
Jordan. That's such an interesting personality you have. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm told that, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, awesome. So, uh, Bob Young has been your uh, your your sensei, your master, teaching you the ways of weaving. Master um, Young. Master Young. Yeah. Master Bob. Um, and I'm sure uh, a lot of the people that are listening know Bob and uh, what an amazing guy he is. So what what has been, um, I guess, noteworthy from that relationship to you and uh, how has he helped you in this process? Uh, Bob, he's a, I don't know, he's a storyteller. Uh, I like, uh, I've always liked hanging out with the older people uh, to listen to the stories they have. And he comes, whenever he does come, he just sits and talks and talks, <laughs> tells all these stories about whenever he was younger and all this and that. Um, he's very knowledgeable uh, of the weaving process. Uh, I mean, you figure like he would have books and things, you know, to do this or do that. And it's just off the top of his head. He's very knowledgeable uh, how to set a loom up and things. Um uh, He's always got these little shortcuts because he's done it before and he's found out it to be, you know, easier and quicker or something for him. Uh, I mean, you can't beat him. Bob, he's something else. Uh, he's just, I, I really like him because he tells stories. He tells some good ones. <laughs> when, when we had him on the podcast, the amount of detail for oh, things yes. that happened like 50 years ago. I'm yes. Like, well, what, I was in, what was interesting was like Jordan's from Leslie County and before the podcast started, he had given Jordan his entire like family background. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. He's All like, the way back from like, yeah. he's like you're, yeah. you're Melungeon. You're Melungeon. related to the Mullins. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. You're not even from Knott County. How do you know these people? I don't even, I don't know. He just knows everybody. <laughs> everybody in uh, in yeah. Southeast Kentucky. He's, uh, he's just, what is it? Uh, what is it called? Genealogy or something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's uh, he's been getting into that pretty deep here lately. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell me my whole family history just just by the way my eyes look. He's yeah. like, are you a <laughs> I'm like, how do you know, Bob? Yeah. How do you know? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we love Bob. Um, I'm excited to show Bob. We uh we got a uh, digitizer of like for film the other day, and uh, we got some old film that we created files out of, and I'm excited to show it to him and see. I'm yeah. assuming he'll probably be able to tell me every person in that video. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Corey made fun of me when he, when I when I asked for it, but now that we got it, it's real cool, ain't it, Corey? Well, uh, yeah, I eventually realized <laughs> I eventually realized how much value it would have to me, and you're for, welcome for video work. You're welcome. So. <laughs> we just got to figure out how to make it uh, straighter. And yeah, that's not have the <laughs> lining up the film is yeah, the, is the big the problem. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. we digress. Uh, so how does <laughs> how does one get into into weaving, Anthony? Well. Uh, I'm not real sure, Jordan. Uh, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of uh, stumbled into it and uh, took some really good interest in it. And uh, Yoko pretty much took it from there. She uh, she hooked me up with Bob. I uh, thought it would be a good idea. Uh, me and Bob actually met over here. I think, is it the Grand Room over here at the Senate? Oh, the Great Hall. The Great, the great, the great Hall. Great the Great Hall. The Great Hall. Yes, the Great Hall. We met over there the first time. Uh, social distance and all that. Had our masks on and the... Uh, Yoko's like, he's like 80 years old. Uh, he can't walk and all this and that. I'm like, and then he showed up. I was like, well, Lord, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Bob. But uh, we met over there, and uh, he brought a book with him. Uh, I kept it uh, for a few days and read it and things like that. And uh, it just it went from there. Uh, he uh, donated a, a loom that he had uh, down here at his, uh, I believe it was his childhood his childhood yes, home. Yes. Uh, he had one uh, in there that he donated to us uh, for me to uh-huh. use and uh, was very uh, willing to uh, come and teach me. So uh, it just kind of went from there, you know. Uh, <laughs> but other, I don't really know how one <laughs> would go into uh, the uh, occupation of weaving. I'm not real sure on I that I guess one. it's just like a natural, <laughs> you know. Like, just it's like a natural thing, right. yeah. Find yeah. a master to well, teach you the ways. Well, where does the patience for it come uh well i don't know i've always been patient uh really i don't know uh i don't have no answer for that jordan gotcha. uh, i've just, just always been a patient just person. built in patience built yeah. in patience that's yeah. where that's where you and i differ Anthony. I have <laughs> zero patience for <laughs> pretty much anything yeah i've always uh i've always been a very patient person uh i don't uh 
let's see. I'm not a very patient person. I just hide it better gotcha. than other people do. <laughs> see, I, I don't. <laughs> Hardly ever. High tolerance. This is true. Yeah. Yeah, I have a very high tolerance for things, yeah. So what you're saying is that you were born to be a weaver. It's you starting just, to sound like that. Yeah, eh? you got the stuff. It's like, you got yeah. The, got it's the what Bob keeps telling me, but I don't know. Maybe it's true. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Because you got a lot of things I I, I can't even I, I don't think there's them. too many people who see, like, suddenly find a, a lap loom in a, in a room you're cleaning, and you're like, what's this? I want to do this. <laughs> like, immediately. And I'm yeah. like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I found it, and I think, what was it? The next weekend, I built one. Oh, I, know. I, I don't <laughs> think you knew what it was. Yeah, I didn't really. No, yeah. I was like, but I want to do this. Yeah, I was and like, I'm this like, looks okay. pretty interesting. <laughs> Let's I, we'd, do it. We had found it, and I I'd set it on the table and just looked at it forever. And I was like, I think I'm going to try to do this, whatever it is they're doing. I don't have any clue. <laughs> so I, I showed up one day with a saw and some boards and started cutting, sawing, and carrying on, nailing, and screwing. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like... <laughs> I just copying this thing here, and I'm gonna do what they're doing. So it and get just, me out of quilting. Yeah, I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my hands are hurting. <laughs> I poked my fingers so many times with the sewing needle, <laughs> just trying to do something a little different. Just take the needles out of the equation <laughs> yeah, entirely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, what do you? What are some other hobbies that you have, or what do you like to do in your? spare time when you're not at the artisan center well when i'm not at the artisan center uh i'm usually doing some kind of work all the time uh, no matter where i'm at uh, i wear pants and boots all the time because you never know when you'll have to work yeah uh, i enjoy riding horses uh slow long walks on the beach <laughs> <laughs> things like that uh, romance novels yeah i have uh <laughs> I've Rock actually, uh, Paul, the Luthery down here at the Luthery shop, had just put a fiddle together for me. I'm going to learn how to play a fiddle now. Oh. Uh, I've uh, managed to learn how to play the dulcimer that I made, uh, the ukulele. I could not play it, uh, so it just sits in the case. <laughs> but uh, eventually I'll learn. Uh, I've, uh, I've uh, always liked dirt track racing. Uh, I go up here to Isom uh, every weekend and watch it. I've actually just become, uh, let's see how to put it, uh, in a position where I think I'm going to buy one, actually, and uh, start driving a dirt track car. So that's going to be very interesting. Uh, we're, probably, we're, we're a team. Yeah. I'll probably He's make it followers. around. Uh, Probably make it around one or two times and put it in the wall. But <laughs> it'll be fun, though. I saw you all went to the races the other day at Isom. Yes. I really wanted to go to that, but I didn't really find out about it until, like, that week. But That's really sprint exciting. Sprint cars at Isom, that sounded insane to me. It was it was pretty uh, <laughs> it was pretty pretty good actually. They didn't uh, they only uh, ran them four at a time because where it's not as wide as a, yeah. a bigger track, but uh, they were fast. They were real fast. It was a great time though. We had a yes, we did. We had a very very good crew, very uh, comedic crew, I guess you'd say. <laughs> we was, have it uh, all figured out. We have your. Oh yeah, we got uh, tire changers. We got a uh, manager. Everything, managers. Yes. PR agents. And everything. Who's, who's changing the tires? Uh, Kelsey and Sarah Kate. Yes. Well, that was That's my thought. Was, are they changing the tires? Yeah. Yes. Well, they they seen the guys on the uh, the the wrecker truck that would go out and pull the wrecked ones off the track, and Sarah Kate's like, "I want that job." <laughs> <laughs> so Kelsey's going to drive the truck, and Sarah Kate's going to change the tires. <laughs> Nice. I want to be the guy that drives the water truck around. Yeah. <laughs> that seems crazy. Yeah. Heck yeah. They're going sideways through there. It's, okay. it's necessary. <laughs> yeah. Important yeah. job. It's all it's all for one bigger purpose. Yes. Yeah, all the jobs are there. You go. Right. Teamwork. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Teamwork. And uh, I don't know if Corey did it. Do we have our sound or no? No, we don't have our sound. Okay. Didn't well, have time for that. I can I, give you other sounds. No, it's it's fine. I can work with this. So <laughs> we were going to have a lightning round sound that's going to be thunder, and it was going to go. <laughs> so Still there's the this. lightning round. Yeah, yeah boy. You yeah. can just do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we'll just go ahead and get started. So coffee or tea? If neither, what do you drink? Mm, coffee in the morning and tea all day. I've actually got into uh, drinking some raspberry sweet tea, actually. Uh, it's very good. I was buying it at the grocery store down there in Georgia. I've not found it back up here yet. What? But uh, it's very soothing. Okay. 
I'm drinking. I'm drinking a pink grapefruit, a sweet grapefruit. Ooh. Very, yeah. So I'm a very much a tea guy. I am. I am straight coffee, but I, I thought about making tea today. My, my pomegranate white tea. I really like that. I'm gonna try it. But uh, pomegranate. I wanted, sounds nice. I needed. I needed a good dose of caffeine because I was having a headache and feeling really tired. So you got to work your way down. Yeah. Just gotta do the green tea. Yeah. I think I think Randy Wilson got rid of his migraine from drinking green tea. Oh. Like Does he not morning. drink coffee anymore? He doesn't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee. Did no. he drink coffee before though? No. Oh, okay. So uh, I I was I was thinking you were saying that was the problem causing his headaches. I'm like that No, could, no, no. That no, could no, explain no. things. No, it's but something in the green tea. Cuz I get a lot of headaches. Yes. <laughs> yes. You drink like 5 cups a day, so that's <laughs> Yeah, I think it's probably just the opposite effect happening to me yeah, you, you take a day off and it's, it kills you it might oh yeah if i don't have my coffee at the specified time yeah. each day i'm in trouble it might. <laughs> yeah i have to try the green tea so yoko i guess you're a tea drinker yes you know this peppermint tea i got from yoders is like exceptionally good i don't know why <laughs> it's not a promotion they don't pay me for this, but it's it's so I mean, good. Everything at Yoder's is exceptionally good. Yes, so is but true. but that it's you know it's yeah. just like it's in a, it's a tea bag, but it's so good. Just letting you know. This okay. episode of the Hyman Cast is brought to you by Yoder's <laughs> Country Mark. <laughs> 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 Got to get those molasses cookies, fam. Oh yeah, that's cookies. my favorite. There's like a there's like a contingent for the molasses cookies and another side for the yeah. brown butter. Yeah. So. Yes. You know, if you want extra amounts of sugar, you go for the brown butter. Yes. If you want a That's nice. That's pure sugar. You want a spice. You want yes. flavor, a deep flavor, you go for the molasses. Yes. Yeah, I like both. Yeah, see, Yoko knows. Yes. Yoko knows. With tea. Oh, yeah. Perfect. With tea. With tea. Mm-hmm. The brown butter's got to have coffee with it. That's good now, maybe that's what it is. That's, that's a good combo. A little bitter of the sweet. Yes. All right, next question. If money were no object, but you could buy one thing, what would you buy? That's a good question. Light model? Probably a light model. <laughs> <laughs> probably see a light model. That'd probably be the first thing I'd buy. If I could buy if I could buy one thing and money was no object, yeah, I'd buy a pro light model. <laughs> that way I could You should flip the Yoko's face right I, now. I, know. <laughs> I, I have I have no I, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what I wanna buy. It's a good question. I want a camper. A yeah. camper. Like one of them that you drive, or like a big fancy one. Thing you pull, like an airstream. Yeah, fifth wheel. Yeah, but okay. that seems like such a little. You know, I mean, like you know, like if money was not an objection, I mean, like buy a money tree. Yeah, I mean, just whatever makes you happy. It grows more money. A lot of people that? want uh, large houses and things, and like if I, I had a million dollars, I wouldn't. I'd just buy a little tiny house because yes. I am. My house is big enough as it is. See, it. and I'm tired of cleaning it. I know. I would buy it. <laughs> a plot of land and live off the land and never have to work another day in my life. So, yeah. That's well, my you dream. have to have a house. I'll build my house, Yoko. You have you have that's going to be my new, my new to, thing. You have to work to work off the land, though. Yeah. It takes a lot of work. <sighs> it's not work if you, you love what you're You can't have a tomato plant on your porch. And you you can to have a money tree on your land. Yeah, I'll have a money tree like go. Yoko. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll send some to you, too, so <laughs> I'll still be living off the grid, but I'll send it via mail. <laughs> That's my dream, too, is to live off the grid. Solar-powered house. Good that, garden. Yeah, that would be awesome. That's why I like it over there in Viper. Like, you can't even, like now where the leaves are on the tree, you can't even see the porch light at nighttime. Like, it's completely covered. I, 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 covered. I, I, like, if you have never been there, you would never find it. Unless you? I was standing at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> <laughs> did, did the bear come and visit you yet? I I have not seen the bear yet, uh, but I've been like throwing food out like over in the corner of the yard, yeah, like trying go. to bait him in, sort of. Why? Well, so I can see the bear. No, I yes. mean, that's what you do. Yes. You got to bait him in. Just leave the garbage bag out there. And well, go. I think there's like <laughs> a, a couple of raccoons that have been ah. tearing the garbage open because I've had to pick that up for the last few weekends. Right. See, I've also been drawing animals in, Anthony, but <laughs> I'm up there, so it might be a little bit more of a problem. I mean, so. You did it right here. The turtle shell. <laughs> the turtle. Is that how you got the turtle, turtle shell? shell? No, actually, I found Ooh. that on a hike way way up in the hills. So. Sure. <laughs> Yoko's thinking I'm a little sus over here. I know. He is a little sus. <laughs> Maybe a little. 
So if you were put on an island with enough food, enough water, enough shelter, and could only bring one thing, what would you bring? Oh, an iPod. The way you can listen to music. <laughs> like, that's a, you got to have music. Especially on a beach. Whew, golly. What would you do if, there, if, you, if it were dead, Anthony? Oh, <laughs> What's I'd, up then? I'd rig up some kind of device to charge it. Well, solar powered chargers. Yeah, <laughs> I'd have like uh, some coconuts over there. Like <laughs> creek water spinning with a little like, alternator rigged up. Some like, sort. A, like a steam powered iPod. Yeah, like yeah. I'd, yeah we'd yeah. rig it up. I like what you're going on over there. <laughs> I can relate to that. I didn't think a person in the world existed that didn't really like listening to music until I met Josh Mullins. Yeah, that's uh And I just like, no. I, is there any joy no, in your life? Not at all. He doesn't, really? that's doesn't have a fam- favorite band, not a favorite genre. He just sits and quiet. I like guess quiet we'll, is his We'll favorite. bring your fiddle and my banjo, and with our skills, we'll convert him. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to. That'd can, be great. We can try. Yes. We can try. Yeah. Beginner level. Fiddle and banjo is the best. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you bring, Yoko? Uh, well, I was going to say my cat. Good answer. Now I have two cats. Mm-hmm. But 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 then iPod made me think that I probably should bring my banjo. Yeah. There you yes. go. Oh. That would On the be beach. Good. Chilling. Banjo. Yes. Yeah. That a little foggy good. mountain breakdown. <laughs> I, I don't really like the beach, though. Well, that kind of ruined the island <laughs> idea. It, 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 kind of, it sounds like torture to me. Yeah, it's going to be upset anyway. All right. I got one last one. Jordan's big I, question. Yeah, this is the biggest, most uh, important question <laughs> that we've ever asked on the, on the podcast. So uh, if you were a potato, how would you be cooked? I've actually had trouble with this question since the last time I've been thinking on it. I've even asked several people. And I'm getting mixed results back, but... I would think fried, like not like <laughs> hard fried, but like lightly fried. Okay, you know what I mean. <laughs> what? Why light? Why lightly fried? Well, because I, you know, I, I, I'm not really a, a hard outside textured part. You know what I mean? Not, I don't <laughs> okay. have like a a hard shell on the outside. I'm kind of like soft. You really? Like, <laughs> I'm like a hopeless romantic mushy on the inside. <laughs> yeah. You really have put a lot of thought into it. I, I, I have been thinking about this question. I, I bet you I've asked thirty people. You know, I've also some people say mash. Some people you say ask other people. Yeah, you researched. I have like yeah, like Got a, a, yeah. It's been on my mind for like <laughs> two weeks now. <laughs> See, I have that effect with my questions. People they think about it, boil them over. You know, yeah. But. Jordan, I haven't put one thought into your questions. What? I said I haven't put one extra thought into your questions. Well, that just means that you're a loser, Corey. <laughs> they're they're good questions. <laughs> What what about you, Yoko? If you were a potato, um, I don't. I have a I have a problem with this question because. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, like that's like basically asking like you're gonna die. I mean, you could be a regular potato. I mean, but but you you're gonna be cooked. So like you and I either be boiled uh, or roasted or you're cut up and true. and I and could. eventually it's like okay. Just scratch that how, one off <laughs> the paper, George. So how would I want to die? You want to be fried in oil. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I just want to be buried. You just... <laughs> <laughs> Can I just and grow you, more yeah, potatoes? Yeah, grow more potatoes. Yeah. I like that better. Yeah, there you go. Oh, the, like yeah. never, like you just never ending giving all the time. There yeah. you go. I'm, okay. I'm just reproducing multiple Yokos everywhere. How's that? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that would be great. Are you supposed that would to be, be happy? Great. Oh, I'm tickled to death. Okay. <laughs> you have no idea. What about you, Corey, since you didn't put yeah, any thought into really. it? Uh, all of my thought was fried in, uh, with some, uh, cornmeal mixed in, like, you know, the corn, you know, your cornbread batter mixed into it, because that's a really delicious way Ooh. to cook it. So you just want to be delicious. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> Corey. <laughs> Yeah. I like my potatoes. I would be mashed because I feel <laughs> like that. I feel like that reflects my mental state most days <laughs> in my organization. So, mashed. Mashed. Yeah. Okay. Just, just a mess too. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the Little, wor- that's, that's the worst. Yeah. Just like if you drop your plate and the mashed potatoes. You get boiled and then <laughs> smushed. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Cut like up a, too. Cut I mean, up. I, I've boiled. Dropped. I, I've dropped a Smushed. handful of plates I straight mean, upside down. It's always upside down. And they in the hallway, <laughs> didn't you have mashed potatoes on your yeah, plate? Yeah, it, it was mashed potatoes. And it just, <laughs> I took a picture of it because of how sad it was. Is it just flattened out? Just, <laughs> there it goes. He was in the hallway and the 
basement over here, and it's like an echo chamber in there like from end to end. And we was in the office, and I just heard the awfulest, you know, commotion happen. <laughs> no, it was lasagna, and it and it layered out upside down all the way across the floor, and I was like, that was the literal worst way it could have fell. So that's just I do it. You know, if I do it, I do it big. So that's there right. Go. There you go. That's <laughs> right. You do it big. Go all out. Go big or go home. Exactly. So if I'm going to make a mess, I'm going to make a good mess. Yeah. All right. I think that is the the end of our lightning round questions yeah. for the day. And, uh, end of our podcast. And what a strong way to end it, too. So. <laughs> yep. As always. Yoko and Anthony, thank you all again for coming back and knocking this out with us. Everything has went smoothly. Things Yay. went great. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And everybody out there in the world, check out the Appalachian Artisan Center and the good work they are doing. Where can they go? Artisancenter.net. Is that what it is? What's the website? Yes. Artisancenter.net. Dot net. Yeah. Check them out. Uh, They're on Facebook. I'm assuming on the gram, on the Twitters and all that good stuff. I'm assuming maybe. Maybe Yes. If you're like us, you're just kind of like, what is this Twitter thing? Social media. Instagram you know, is yes. difficult. I'm I'm pushing out the Twitter and the Instagrams every day, Corey. Yeah, every day. Every day. <laughs> We're on it now. On top of it. Okay. But I'm still very confused by it. All right. Uh, yep. Thank you all again. And uh, we'll, we'll come back here in a second for some announcements and all that good stuff as always. So. With that, Yoko and Anthony have left the building. Pretty good, pretty good I'll, episode, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so. I like this heavy bass thing we're doing. Can we turn yeah. it down? Just trying to trying to turn it down towards making sure that our, we're not fighting against it like you were in your PSA, apparently. Yeah, the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as always, we want to get to. Some announcements and things happening here at the settlement school. That part gets a little bit louder. Yeah, loud, ain't it, Corey? <laughs> Probably should have listened to me. Get some announcements and also recognize our wonderful donors. So, um, first off, uh, it is getting close to the Appalachian Writers Workshop, and that will take place on July 19th through the 23rd. And, uh, yeah, I think the registration and all that and everything for that is already closed, but it... Yep. Um, you still can take part because uh, we will be live streaming the readings each evening uh, that week and also the keynote speaker, Adriana Trigiani. And uh, so you can tune into that stuff at 7.30 on... Author the, of Big Stone Gap, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be live streaming those every night that week. Um, and you can tune in on our Facebook page. Um, and the Writers Workshop this year is... Uh, kind of a hybrid situation there's a virtual component some people are doing it virtually some people are coming to campus so mix uh, of both so you, you you'll see that some people are speaking from zoom and while some people are here so yeah. that'll be happening uh, and that is again july 19th through the 23rd speak or the live streams each night at 7 30 yeah and uh, we also have prime time reading so that's uh, on tuesdays from four to six it's a free educational family fun night with Heinemann Settlement School. It's a literacy-focused vo- event, and it will be held at the Mike Mullins Cultural Heritage Center. And um, uh, each participating family will receive one free book to take home, a free dinner, and a free storytelling session. So a lot of free things, a lot of, uh, a lot of good things you need to get involved with. Have fun with your family. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my kids went to it last week, and I uh, started doing it last year, and which was like in March, and we got like two in, and then the pandemic happened, so we had to quit. So we we're starting to get back up this year. So, yeah, But we're wide open now. So. Yeah, come join Primetime Reading. And uh, we also got Farmer's Markets happening every Tuesday also from 4 to 6. Um, and starting in July, they'll be happening every Friday as well from 10 to 12. And... Um, we have been getting lots of phone calls for senior vouchers, and we are pleased to announce that those have arrived, and they will be will be giving those out on Tuesday. Um, trying to see what day that actually is. Um, Tuesday, June 29th from 11 to 1. I think so. Yeah, 11 to 1 on the porch here at the Selma School. So if you are 
uh, not county resident, uh, senior age, and fit into the income bracket. Uh, for that, you can come pick up some... 60 or older, by the way. 60 or older. <laughs> um, I don't know. And uh, fit into that income bracket, you can come to the settlement school and pick up some vouchers from us to use at the farmer's market. Yeah. You'll just need to bring your ID and uh, proof of income. Yep. Um, and when you bring those senior vouchers to the farmer's market, we have the ability to double them with some... Uh, more vouchers, so Jeff, double the money. You can only double so much per uh, per market, so there's also that. Um, and as always, we want to recognize our donors and thank them for this. And uh, my first, I, I meant to do this last on the last podcast, is to thank Miss Julie Schrader uh, up in the South Dakota DAR. Sent me, sent me this wonderful mug along with lots of other South Dakota treats and delicacies. Uh, Busy Lizzie Flowers Flowerless Bakery. Um, this is a wonderful mug. Thank you, Julie, for for sending that to me. And if uh, you're listening and you also would like to send us mugs, we always love to feature our wonderful mugs here. And uh, this one's from Kings Island. <laughs> yeah, so it's a good way to get a shout out and make us happy as well. As we love mugs, we love coffee, we love tea. So yes, I just love the whole culture surrounding a mug. Anything yes. that goes in it, I'm about it for sure. We also have the Francis Hopkinson chapter, D-A-R, out of New Jersey, sponsored two kids for the Imagination Library. And you can, too, for just $35. You can give a a family uh, uh, a library for their children, ages one to five. Yeah. My youngest just got hers in the other day. A little engine that could. Oh, boy. That's a classic. Yeah. That's uh, that's Lucy, right? Yep, Lucy. She's, She's not reading yet, but... We'll read it to her. Yeah, read it to her. <laughs> Inspire that love of reading. Yeah, she doesn't really quite sit still enough, long enough to read a book at the moment, but we'll Same. get there. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, we want to recognize Marianne Worthington, who sent some books that we had listed on our Amazon wish list for the James Steele Cottage. Um, I guess it was some James Steele books that we didn't have in stock that we wanted to put up there. So, yep. um, yeah, and we thank you for that, Marianne. And uh, if you also would like to donate something to our uh, from our Amazon wish list, you can uh, find that on our website and browse through the different things that we have listed on there. We also want to. I don't think we need to recognize Becky Elam, too, who sent that awesome digitizer oh, yeah. to us. We uh, mentioned it in the episode. I'm sure Becky's listening. So thank you, yeah. Becky. Yeah, uh, you'll be seeing some some sweet film footage from the history, from the archives here at the settlement school. Before too long, we'll we'll start uh, putting that out in different things. So, yeah, not going to give any spoilers. So, yeah, be looking out for it. And uh, we also received a grant from the Kentucky Colonels, of which I am a member, uh, to purchase ten DSLR cameras for upcoming Heinemann Photography After School Club. So it's just a uh, the kids will um, be kind of creating these narratives using photos and uh, taking pictures of, you know, their, their family members and getting stories from them. So picture of grandma and a story about grandma. So Yeah. It's awesome. Excited for that. And I'm just curious, Jordan, once Sarah Kate buys these cameras, will you stop picking on me for always wanting cameras and saying that I got like 10 cameras? No, because her 10 cameras cost half of what one of these cameras cost. Mm. Okay. No comment. But huh? She's getting 10 of them. Yep, she's getting 10, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can end it like this, Corey. I don't care to, but... I'm a little jealous of Sarah Kate and her 10 cameras. I'll check to see if they do video. I don't think they do. Of course not. <laughs> not good enough. All yeah. right. Thank you all so much for tuning in to episode 16 of the Hyman Cast this week, and we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be back here in a couple weeks again. My name is Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. And we'll catch you next time. The Heinemann Cast is brought to you by the faithful and generous supporters of the Heinemann Settlement School. For over 100 years, we've been celebrating heritage and changing lives in central Appalachia. If you're interested in supporting the work of Heinemann Settlement School, you can go to our website at www.heinemann.org, or you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the handle at Heinemann School.